Okay, I think we are good to go. Welcome everyone. Lovely to have so many people joining us uh, today for this webinar, which I'm super excited uh, to present today. And you'll see today we have a special co-host, uh, Natasha, uh, who will be presenting this. This is a, a topic that I've, uh, I know Natasha is extremely passionate about. <laughs> So uh, welcome everyone. We're just having uh, everyone join the uh, the webinar now. We've had a, um, a massive response um, to this this particular topic, so it's obviously very well received, um, which is great. It looks like we're, we're on the money with with what people want to uh, hear about uh, for this. So Zoom is currently letting everyone in. So just um, as we get started, you'll see we have this graphic here looking at what we are talking about today. Is it work-life balance, Natasha, we're talking about today or something slightly different? Oh. <laughs> it's definitely evolved over our conversations um, over the period of time. So um, I think that we've nailed it in terms of integration. I think that word came up um, in our pre-planning and I was like, yeah, this is definitely life work integration, isn't it? <laughs> Exactly. That's the top. So we're not going to look at balance. We're going to talk about how to integrate work into your life. And this is something that uh, just became evident as uh, as we were uh, evolving. So before uh, we, we jump into it, let's um, just do uh, just uh, a quick opportunity to sort of introduce ourselves. Um, and so uh, if we can move to that, uh, this slide here, I'll just click it across and here we are. Um, so just want to, I guess, um, to provide a very brief kind of background um, about ourselves, just to put a little bit into context what we are talking about um, today. So my name is Damien Adler. Um, I am the co-founder of Powerari um, and the head of customer success. I'm a registered psychologist here in um, Australia and uh, got into this space of uh, managing and learning about and developing uh, you know, technology to run the health practices because of uh, my own experience in, in doing this. So uh, my wife is also a psychologist and I, we um, started a private practice many, many years uh, ago and we grew that practice. We had a very sort of clear idea when we started it that we wanted it to be a practice that was light on administration, high on automation, and that was a group practice. That meant that we could be independent from it over time. The practice um, could operate you know, with, without us um, and give us um, you know, lifestyle and, and uh, freedom to be able to move beyond this, the um, scenario of being trapped into a you know, having a job, if you like, of just providing services. So uh, a very long story short, but when with that as a goal, we realized that we needed technology. It was impossible to do it without, you know, technology. And um, and then we uh, started Powdari um, in conjunction, in partnership with my brother. Um, and we have grown, you know, Powdari um, over that time. And so now, you know, Powdari uh, operates um, in Australia, UK, US, um, Canada, uh, South Africa and a whole bunch of, of other um, countries. So it's really grown this idea of having a system that really helps um, people to automate and to make managing their practice um, earlier, oh, easier, I should say. Um, okay, now I'll hand over to you, Natasha, to give uh, a bit of a, a background about um, how you come to this space and uh, uh, and why it's something that you're, this topic is something that you're passionate about. Yeah, easy. Um, thanks for having me. Firstly, I'm. I you know I love our conversations, Damien. I think Power Diary is amazing. It's one of people like they don't even talk to me about other practice management systems because they know how much I love Power Diary. And as I was listening to you, I actually just realized um, on the back of my what the pictures hanging behind me, um, and those I don't know. You know, um, it, there's a woman in a bathtub that says, "Quit busy." Yeah. <laughs> And that's, that's how passionate I am about this. I actually have, you know, this in my life. I really want people to stop the glorification of busy. Um, but I'm an international business coach, um, American, moving to Australia and um, have been doing this for 20 years. A bit the same, Damien. Like it was like I wanted to create a lifestyle where my businesses were able to provide 
you know, not only a lifestyle for myself, but for my employees and the people that, um, you know, my, my sphere of influence, if you will. Um, and so over the last 20 years, I've been working internationally with multiple businesses, almost a serial entrepreneur, if you will. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm really, really, you, you mentioned a bit earlier that you liked the idea of automation. You and that kind of like, like, we need this practice to be on automation. Um, I'll often use the word systematization, right? Yeah. So really without that, you don't, if you can't replicate things, you're not going to have competitive advantage or sustainability. So yeah, it's just, it's so aligned um, with the values at Power Diary that it's, it's great. Yeah. And I think too, that, that, um, that word systematization um, is, you know, people often, you know, I know when I used to talk about systematization and first people would think, oh, mm -hmm. you're trying to turn practices into a McDonald's, yeah. right? Um, yeah. Where everything, <laughs> and that's not it at all, right? Because it's about mm -hmm. systematizing the sort of administrative mm -hmm. functions and all the kind of stuff that mm -hmm. goes around the actual mm -hmm. therapy vision, mm -hmm. because that other stuff mm -hmm. is often sort of noise, you know, it's, it's stuff that needs mm -hmm. to be done, but it, it, it can take away from, and we mm -hmm. certainly know can drain people's energy, enthusiasm, mm -hmm. motivation. So we're talking about systematization um, and, and automation when we're not talking about um, the delivery of the therapeutic content, whatever profession, mm -hmm. whether you're a you know, physio or a psychologist or a you know, massage therapist or, or whatever. It, it's not mm -hmm. about that. It's about all the stuff that goes around it. So it frees mm -hmm. time up and importantly, mental resources, creativity, mm -hmm. passion, enthusiasm. It, it, by taking those things away, um, mm. then it leaves the space and the and the capacity to do it. So when we when we use those terms today, and I'm sure you'll come <laughs> up a bit because uh, um, you know I think uh, you and I have, have talked a number of times over the years and and, and share um, a, a passion about this. We're talking about those things to allow the the um, you know people to have to do the part that they typically love a lot more, which mm. is the uh, delivery or it may be other forms of um, of, of health uh, care provision so um so what is it when we're looking at this so as we alluded to at the start um you know we, we really didn't like the idea of this kind of you know first work life balance well we really shouldn't be putting work <laughs> first in that and so we kind of evolved when we were talking about and saying no really let's make it about sort of life work balance and that was sort of step number two when we were really sort of consolidating what we were going to do today and then we kind of concluded right that actually this isn't about balance you know the aim here yeah. right it's not about 50 50. <laughs> um, we're not here on this planet to to just work right or just to get that yeah. even um so really that idea that we came you know settled on is this idea that's integrating <laughs> and mm -hmm. making you know life fit with this uh fit with yeah. the work they're doing and not trying to start it out with this idea that we're aiming for balance mm -hmm. very good yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> let's have a look at uh you know really around this you know the a little bit of perhaps about the experience why we sort of chose this topic i know we've touched on it sort of uh, briefly in our introductions um but in your experience, do you find that this comes up when you're working with lots and lots of practices? I know you've worked now mm. yeah, with thousands of practices and uh, you've been in Australia mm. for some, you know, for, uh, some mm. time now. And of course, uh, you, you mm. were um, very busy in, in the US as well. So um, mm. do you find this as a theme that, that comes up for you uh, when you're working with, mm. with uh, lots of different practices in different contexts? Yeah, yeah. If you email me, two things will pop up. First thing is um, you get an auto reply that says, basically, I'm not going to be a slave to my email address or my emails. And so just give me time because I, I don't want to do that. And the second thing is, is um, my signature says chaos tamer, because a lot of times people are coming and they're seeking out, you know, business support because there's just so much. It's overwhelming and you don't know what to do with it all. There's so many balls in the air and you're juggling all of them. And you know, you start as a clinician, you did this, you did, you invented this, you start as a clinician, right? Seeing clients and you have a bigger yeah. dream for that. And that dream doesn't yeah. mean you need to multiple practices, right? Or if that is the dream, fine. Or that you want to start, I don't know, um, an online platform like Power Diary, but you know, <laughs> yeah. the dream is freedom, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. And it's, in fact, when, when um, you know, you people often get into private practice for different reasons, but they might've been working in other contexts as, 
um, an employee or working often in the government sector or, or um, in the sort of not-for-profit sector, but then end up going into private practice. And there's lots of reasons that feed into it. But as you say, freedom is one of them, right? To set your own hours, to be able to control, theoretically, be able to go on holidays whenever you like. Uh, be able to be there for, <laughs> that's right. I say that because we know the reality of what happens yeah. um, often if this this isn't sort of actively, um, actively managed. Um, and I think the other, you know, reason that this is, you know, always an issue is that, well, I'm going to say always, I mean, occasionally there's exceptions, but pretty much most people will run into this, um, that in the training to become um, a health practitioner of any type, um, it's pretty much universal that there is no real focus um, on running private practices around running a business, around um, integrating it into your life and all the things that can be um, a trap to fall into because this doesn't happen overnight. It's a sort of, it's a frog in a pot, isn't it? That is slowly, you mm -hmm. know, heading up. And, and what we, you know, see and, um, you know, having both had the experience ourselves and having to sort of navigate that of building out a practice and, and, and scaling without, um, you know, uh, you know, in a way that is manageable um, and, and aligned with our goals. But, with Power over the years, you know, we've had, um, you know, the privilege of working with so many um, practices mm -hmm. that are on this journey. And often that's one of the reasons that they are looking, you know, for a system. And it's it's amazing um, how common that experience is that really the people will comment that, you know, that they weren't sort of prepared for it. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, usually what happens is that right at the start of practice and it might be quite small scale, everything kind of, you know, at the start it's like, will I have any clients? Will I be able to pay the bills? Mm -hmm. Should I really have left my job? Oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, that's usually the first sort of like phase. <laughs> um, yeah. But then as it starts to get, you know, successful and the bookings part um, occurs and, you know, that sort of initial anxiety goes away, then the next thought is, oh, I need to grow bigger. Um, but if people don't have the system in place, so they've got something that's that's small, um, but with a fair bit of admin, it's sort of manageable. But but then what happens, of course, is that they scale um, and scale the problems, <laughs> not just, yeah. you know, the, the clinic, but yeah, they, 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 they yeah. Um, yeah, grow it up. The uh, burnout component, um, never been more prevalent. We're seeing, you know, this um, now. What, what sort of things, um, we were talking a bit about this, but what sort of things are you noticing that is sort of contributing um, to to this increase in prevalence and that kind of feeling we get sometimes that, you know, people are well, sort of at the end of their, you know, feeling stressed and, you know, needing a change? Yeah, I think it's been amazing actually just watching kind of the social experiment of COVID. Um, I mean, it, it's like low hanging fruit. I've, I've said this, you know, in the last year or so to my clients, low hanging fruit is actually just too difficult for people to be thinking about, you know, things that should, and I inverted commas, should be easy, you know, are just kind of going in the too hard basket. You're, you're, yeah. Your work and your life have integrated by being forced together, you know, I always think of that BBC yeah. dad, you know, that was like the pivotal component of, of um, 2020 when we were all went into lockdown, you know, it was like we were still trying to compartmentalize the two, the two components, our work and our life and keep them pushed aside and things like that. And so I and, just and think the, the, the BBC dad that. for those, sorry to interrupt, but the BBC dad for those <laughs> yeah. who, who may not have got the reference, but yeah, this is where the, the guy's doing a, uh, he's, he's live on air, right? And do you want to tell a story of what happened and, and no. what, what it kind of, no? So, but you know, the, the kids, you run, you know, come in and, and uh, you know, it, normally we would have a very professional facade, right? And you just wouldn't, someone's doing a live, you know, interview, mm -hmm. but it sort of really brought home this idea and he managed to continue on, uh, you know, mm -hmm. and, and do his thing. And while his wife madly sort of came in and um, and grabbed the kids, and uh, I think we were we were talking about there was also another video that didn't get quite mm -hmm. as much attention, but yeah. where um, a, a mother was uh, uh, you mm -hmm. know in a professional capacity of uh, um, presenting and and talking live on air, and her kids came in and she did something different too, did she? With um, mm -hmm. when her kids came running, mm -hmm. what what did she uh, do from from memory? She just scoops them up into her lap and she's kind of like, look, this is who I am. This is what I need to be doing. Um, and it was, it was a real, it was a real 
shift, I think, in people's mentality about the acceptance of, you know, the fact that we have a life. There's, there's this element, especially as women, that we've got to kind of put away, you know, everything that kind of is perceived in society as making us weak, right? Um, and that's yeah. multiple things that we're juggling. So we've got to kind of stand up here and be able to present ourselves in the same way that men have always done. And, and that that really shifted that perception um, big time. I often have times people coming to me in meetings and they're like, I'm so sorry, my kids. And I'm like, why are you apologizing? Please don't apologize. Yeah. Just thank me for being yeah. patient. I'll just wait. I'll have my cup of tea and <laughs> no, I'm happy to just <laughs> yeah. hang around, you know? So it's just a huge shift. Yeah. And that's sort of the, but I think the, the upside, hasn't it? Like, of, you know, that, that mm -hmm. there's an acceptance perhaps that our uh, personal lives and our work lives are integrated more, but the flip side of it, and, and of course, from a burnout and stress point of view, is that that boundary not being there <laughs> means that it can be a slippery slope, right? Because we don't have that distinction okay. of necessarily office and right. not and so forth. So right. the, the, and I, I think, you know, it's one of the things we identified, uh, you know, has perhaps been increasing this mm -hmm. sort of burnout um, experience for some people, you know, that there isn't that delineation um, there uh, as, as, as it used to be. So, if we get this, you know, when we when we kind of, if we don't manage, you know, burnout and, and not proactive and not mindful of it and aware of our own sort of vulnerabilities here, um, it ultimately, you know, it's often driven by people feeling, you know, um, the need to, as a health practitioner, to be providing services to be continue on, continue on. Um, but actually, the net effect, right, is often the opposite. That we over time, if someone burns out or becomes less effective, less efficient or retires early or ends up with health problems and so forth, you sort of stand back and look at the net contribution, the net impact. It's not positive. <laughs> you know, so when we get this right, um, it yeah. actually increases you know, um, the capacity that we have. Well, we're talking about this a little bit, you know, like it's that integration of being able to make sure that your cup is full. You don't want it to be mm. overflowing. You don't want it to be under full. Like it's got to be full. And, you know, if we consistently continue to give and give and give in our workplaces, right, whether we own it or we're working for someone else, it doesn't matter if we consistently give and there's no ability for us to just recoup and take, then, you know, we're, we're just, we're not going to recover. And that low hanging fruit yeah. is going to continually be in the too hard basket. Um, yeah. It will be yeah. missed opportunities, both in your personal and your professional life. And that's not a way that we want yeah. to live. We've got to evolve. Yeah, no, exactly. And it's a sort of, it's a, it becomes like a, a false economy too, doesn't it? The sense that we are kind of, you know, TV more by pushing on. Um, so let's, uh, we're going to break today uh, down now talking into five themes to explore. Um, and we'll, we'll go through these fairly quickly because the, these webinars are time always flies past. So I'm going to, uh, we'll zip through it really. So defining success, uh, mindset blocks, work habits, systems and structures, and delegation and outsourcing. So let's jump um, straight into um, this this first one here about um, defining success. Um, and when when this when we talk about defining success, what sort of things come to mind for you? And do you work with with uh, when you're mentoring and and uh, coaching um, practice owners and practice managers? What sort of things um, do you do here? And what what things do you find are important? I think it's just it is truly understanding what works for me and my lifestyle, it's not going to be the same in terms of what you need in your lifestyle. You know, like I've got two businesses, um, I'm studying, I've got two dogs, like those are the types of things that are important in my life. And, yeah. you know, so what my goals and what my idea of success looks very different. So without defining mm -hmm. what success looks like, the goalposts are always changing. So we say yeah. like, we need to rest, we need to recover, we need to work harder. You know, we need to do more stuff. And I'm like, well, what does it look, what's more? Tell me what more looks like, you know? Yeah. So yeah, we have to really be able to understand what are the goalposts? And when we get there, how are we celebrating them? So that's what I, I mean, that's my own personal. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, no, I, I would agree entirely. And I think it, it's important to understand the goal because otherwise it goes back to that amplification of what we're already doing. So often, um, you know, people, I think, you know, you use my start like that, that theory, that scenario where you start a practice, it's, it's sort of busy with your own appointments. So you immediately think the solution is to add more practitioners, right? And that, that might be the case, but 
but without saying, well, mm. is that really the direction I want, want to go? Um, because it could also be, well, I mean, maybe you're in a highly niche sort of area and you think, well, actually, I could increase my prices, um, reduce the number of clients mm. I see and set some firm uh, boundaries. Or maybe I want to um, find a way of delivering services in a different way that is more one to many or, you know. So it's, it's that idea, I think, of making sure we don't like sleepwalk into um, mm. a, a way of, of um, expanding or growing because we think it's, there's one way to do it. Um, and yeah, very often it is, you know, in our case, and I think in, in many cases, it is about growing the, the, the practice might be the sensible thing to do. But then again, um, mm. is it doing it in a way that's aligned? Because if your goal mm. is, you know, to become a sort of um, a micromanager and, a, and an admin, you know, mm. over everyone's admin, then you add a whole bunch of um, clinicians to a team and, you know, going to spend a lot of time on admin and, and managing all the things if there's no system in place. So it's that idea of mm. yeah, trying to think what is, as you say, right for you, because it's going to be different. Mm. Um, and I don't know, we often find working with people that when they've got that goal, um, you know, uh, defined or they understand it, everything else is sort of clearer for them, isn't it? Even their decisions mm. about practice management software or what right. steps to, it's, you know, right. to the, either takes them, yeah. 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 Well, you mentioned something, um, and, I'll, and you know, and, I'm, I'm cognizant of the time, but you mentioned something in terms of like, you know, we think oftentimes growth means more. So more practitioners or, you know, more clients or things like that. But instead, if we can understand what are we actually trying to achieve? What is that goal? Yeah. You might look yeah. at your existing systems and realize, hold on, today I've, I've had four no-shows. How do I fix yeah. this? I've got existing <laughs> clients and money sitting on the table. How do I fix the situation that yes. myself or my admin team are booking in clients and the clients yes. are no showing, right? I yeah. wouldn't say go and get more new clients, right? That's, that's yeah. money yeah. down the drain. You've got yeah. active people sitting there waiting to be seen or being, you know, to work with. And we're, we're often fixated on the goal of growth, the goal of getting bigger, that we're not looking or we don't have the space, we don't have the capacity, we don't have the time to look at like, What's actually not working? Where are the holes in yeah. our boat, and how do we fix them first before we think we're going to go and get a holy yacht? <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. And, and I think along those lines too, um, when when uh, people you know talk about it at the moment, in particular, difficulty recruiting and things like that, because that's the only you know. Right. But there are lots of other things you can do. You know, um, if if right. it's if you know your goals, so that way it makes uh, decision making a lot easier. All right, let's um let's jump uh, into uh, this second point. Um, which is around mindset blocks. And I think um, you and I have probably experienced these both, you know, well, I'm speaking for myself, I shouldn't speak for you, but certainly, <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I'm as you know, vulnerable to, uh, to a bunch of these um, and, and have had to sort of learn and develop um, over the time, but uh, you know we see it a lot um, in in this space, and I think this sort of you know perfectionism is something that you know if someone's um, you know we can often spot it in others. You know we're very good with the advice around that. You know? um, but this really does sort of um, hold people up, doesn't it? This notion of what something needs to be before it's finished or done or ready or good enough. Oh. Perfectionism. I, I don't, I'm, I feel really lucky that I don't have that. I don't know why, where, where that gene has passed me by, but I'm, I always kind of say 80%, if, if you can hand it off and get 80% done or get it 80% to, up to par of what you're looking for, that's perfect enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. And oftentimes, yeah, that perfectionism, we put so much energy into having something be perfect and like what's perfect look like that's what i want if yeah. you're a perfectionist yeah. i want you to tell me what does perfect look like like that's, yeah. that's yeah. what i always say to my clients what's perfect <laughs> yeah what's the yeah exactly and and even what's perfect now i mean i don't know i mean if i look at something i i, mm -hmm. I wrote that i was happy with a year ago right it might have felt that's really good i've spent way too much time on it and out it goes um and i look at it now and, I, and it's not perfect you know it, it's a it's a changing thing with time anyway because you grow and you, you you learn and i think the other thing with this is around um the law of diminishing returns and people get kind of lost in this a bit that mm -hmm. you know if you, it, you know you can get something like you say to 80 percent, and i use the same sort of threshold um for, for most things as well so if you look at it you could spend you know um you know a, a lot more time you know you could spend another you know to get it to 90 percent right um mm -hmm. so but for all that extra time you're only adding on like 10 percent. but if you took that same time and apply it to the next thing on your list 
you can probably get a second thing to 80% in that time, you know. So now you've got two things out there that are 80%, you know, and re realistically, they're probably higher than that, but you're, you know, if you're critical. <laughs> um, so, you know, that idea of keeping, you know, don't don't get caught on that because you know, it just, it's such a, a blocker. And, you know, this is that idea of, um, you know, you never feel like you've done enough, you know, there's always more, more, more. Um, mm. Now, we've got some other ones here about mindsets that when we were preparing for this, we, we really resonated. Um, mm. Equating success with hard work. Uh, <laughs> what, <laughs> it's a funny thing, isn't it? This, yeah. yeah. I just, it's, uh, in my coaching, people kind of say to me, they're like, oh, I've worked really hard this year. And I'm like, cool. Do you feel like it's paid off? They're like, no. And I'm like, okay, well, let's look at your numbers. And then they realize the growth. They realize that, you know, their the work that they've done um, means that their client attendance has increased or, you know, their revenue has increased or, you know, they have more referral sources or the right referral sources or the right clients are coming in. They've minimized their caseload. They have less cancellations, less no-shows. And I'm like, is that success? You know? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we can see that with your analytics. Um, and that's where I think we can pull that emotional mind aside and say, hey, let's look at this in wise mind. What, what do we need to be doing? You know, looking at hardcore facts and looking at the information and what that's giving us. Absolutely. And also that, that sort of idea too, that, um, you know, it can almost be a flip side as well, kind of that, you know, people will think, well, I've worked really hard. Um, and therefore feel like, well, I've really given it my all, but it's actually not yeah. in the habit of looking at whether that working hard results in the things that you want to have happen. Um, you know, is it actually yeah. productive? Um, that yeah. then, you know, that's not, uh, and I think we'll touch on that a little bit more in, in one of our other slides around, you know, busyness, mm -hmm. but, uh, well, here it is, right? Yeah, about glorification of busy, right? So this is this idea of, yes. yeah, that, you know, the idea of, you know, when people say, oh, how are you? Oh, busy, busy. <laughs> it's like this, you know, default thing. Um, and it's really quite yeah. counterintuitive, particularly um, mm. for those in the kind of um, health and well-being space, you know, because actually <laughs> we really want to be maximising efficiency and helping people be mm. less busy and being a model, mm. you know, of that. And, and we should be, <laughs> I'd love to see a point where we can be proud to be not busy um and you know sometimes i actually like you know when you have the uh, conversations at you know a supermarket checkout or something and um you know people will say you know how are you busy you know they'll answer the question and yeah i like sometimes saying uh no not not really you know um and just it's so funny when you interrupt the auto, you know the automatic mm -hmm. thing that that people yeah. expect in that the dynamic of um mm -hmm. and they're like oh oh you're like oh no no I, you know uh, I had a relaxing yeah. day or I got some things done, but mm. it was, you know, it, it really is so ingrained that people are shocked if you mm. sort of, uh, mm. if you dispute it. So getting rid of that idea, mm. you know, that, um, that, yeah. you know, success and hard work, um, yeah, mm. that those two are linked in the way, um, or that, mm. you know, being busy in and of itself is something to be mm. proud of or as a badge of honor. Or, and, and certainly in the entrepreneurial kind of, uh, world and mindset there's often mm. this real oh yeah working mm. crazy hours blah 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 you know when when mm. i'm doing those things at times i feel like i'm not mm. managing my work well you know like it, um and yes. yeah but it's it's a funny thing where people see it as a, a badge <laughs> yeah i've i've gotten to a, a bit of that um disruption as well um people kind of ask me like how i'm going or you know you know what what i've got going on or whatever and i'm i've I've just gotten to owning, I've just gotten to the point of owning who I am, right? It's it's like, yeah. look, I'm time poor. I take on way too much. I say yes yeah. to way too many people. Um, I've got ADHD to boot, you know, like I'm managing, I'm masking, I'm doing all the things I'm supposed to be doing here. But at the end of the day, you know, I don't feel like I'm a people pleaser, but I'm going to say yes to people. If I think yeah. I can help them, you know, there's this element of yes, which means that it impacts my workflow because yeah. I don't have a proper stream. Like every time, once in a while, I've got blocks and things like that. So really kind of owning who I am and embracing that and really being unashamed at admitting, you know, my, my schedule yeah. is back to back because I am very time poor, um, yeah. you know, and that's because I like to be able to help people. I like to be able to do things, but at the end of the day, I'm not usually working on weekends. You know, I try yeah. and stop work at four o'clock because my dogs want a W-A-L-K, 
I'm not going to say that word out loud. <laughs> right now, I know they're participating you know? today. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So and this also, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And it goes to the sort of final point too, doesn't it, about thinking, you know, yeah. another sort of mindset trap is sort of thinking about rest as a reward, you know, as if it's sort of like the <laughs> the leftover bits of, you know, when, when, you're, when, when work suck, sucked all the kind of you know, energy out of you, then as a reward, you can have a little bit of rest, you know, which if we think about it from a sort of design your life kind of way, you know, we're sitting back more strategically thinking about how we want our life to be, you know, we don't want to end up mm. in, in that. But that is, that is, you know, how mm. we all, I think, you know, have a vulnerability to kind of drift into that um, and, mm. and to, yeah, view it as, uh, you know, as something that, mm. yeah, you, it's only deserved after to earn. whatever it else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> After your successful, hardworking day, you know, of, exactly. of doing everything that you should do and being so busy. <laughs> like, That's I right. Can't exactly. Myself with going to bed at 8 a.m. or 8 p.m. Sorry. Yeah. I'm like, no. Exactly. <laughs> Not a reward. No, it's spot on. And yet, you know, it's when we put it like this, it seems so obvious. But if we don't stop and think about it, you know, we get into that automatic script that most of the world operates on of, you know, busy mm -hmm. is good. And particularly if you're a business owner, mm -hmm. it's like this sort of identity that people will often kind of yeah. put on of like, oh, yes, all business owners. Okay. You know, yes, that often is the outcome, but it's not something we should be, mm -hmm. you know, glorifying. It's something we should be seeing as something mm -hmm. that is, uh, should be a focus of attention. Like hopefully mm -hmm. we're making a small dent in that um, today. Okay. Let's yeah. move on to yeah. uh, number three here. And this is mm -hmm. looking at your particular work habits. So allowing mm. your schedule to get out of control. Uh, oh. So there's a, there's a few sort of common ones here, huh? The, you know, yeah. too many clients. Mm. Why does that happen, do you think, that we end up uh, and so many practitioners? Because we see it all the time, of course, when we're talking to, mm. to our customers, because they all mention that they might be talking mm. to us about something to do with mm. Power Ari and, you know, um, but this comes up, you know, oh, I'm so busy, I've got, okay, mm. too many clients. Um, so we know there's a lot of, demand for services but what leads to it in your experience that people take on so many clients it's i i think it's poor planning it's you you know we, we spoke kind of about that idea of you start as a clinician you move into being a business owner and an entrepreneur and then because of the growth and what you see and perceive as success because that's what everyone's saying on social media you grow more you recruit you hire you know, you've got all these things on your plate, but it's really about planning. It's understanding where those goals are. What are your working, what's your working day? What do you, how many clients do you need on your caseload, right? How do you manage those clients on your caseload? Do you have your ideal clients or do you have people that are just kind of fillers mm -hmm. or bums on seat, you know, like there's a whole bunch of things. And then because there aren't any systems in place, right? cancellation mm -hmm. fees being enforced. I like to call it the session fee policy rather than the cancellation policy. You know, they've got private practice wastage coming left, right and center that they're feeling bad, like the motion. So then they book mm -hmm. outside their hours um, or mm -hmm. they, they don't have control over the session necessarily. And so it goes over time, you know, and then they've got to figure out when are they writing their notes. It's a snowball effect. And, mm -hmm. you know, having the boundaries in place from a practice standpoint, even if you're solo, um, and honoring that because you've got yeah. your business to think about, you've got the client to think about, you've got yourself to think about, you've got your referral source to think about. So really that whole getting your schedule in place so with the right number of clients on your caseload, ideally your ideal client caseload, yeah. you know, honoring yeah. those times, going, not, you know, not taking longer for those sessions you're really protecting all of those relevant stakeholders in there. You're not setting up expectations with clients that you're always going to go five or 10 minutes over. You're not, you know, sort of setting up the expectation that if they ask nicely and they bat their eyes or they tell you some sort of story about what's going on, that you've got to sacrifice time with your family mm -hmm. or time at the gym or time with your dogs. That was a personal thing um, to be <laughs> able to yeah <laughs> um to be able to give the client or the you know the, the patient what they need and it's yeah it's just unfair to you yeah, yeah I, I agree and I, I think the other um element I'd, I'd add to that is um and this perhaps you know goes to mindset as well but I think often clinicians um you know there are uh, you know at the moment there's often shortages um and you know people mm -hmm almost individually take it upon themselves to try and solve 
or, you know, to stretch themselves to kind of address this, you know, thing and, um, you know, address this kind of shortage that is, or this increase in demand, you know, um, which clearly, if we sort of step back, I mean, I understand where it comes from, of course, it comes from very altruistic and, and, and lovely, you know, things about, about the people. But if we kind of stand back and look at it, you know, there's just no way, um, you know, it doesn't matter how much you, you stretch, um, it doesn't address, it's not addressing that issue at the right level. That that often needs to be done at a government level, at a professional, you know, as, you know, as a profession, um, you know, at a training level, all sorts of sort of more global things. But I think people lose sight of that and, you know, what their day-to-day -day experience is, is that they've got someone on the phone who really wants to see them um, or they've got a referrer mm -hmm. who they've had a good relationship with over a number of years mm -hmm. and that referrer is saying, look, I really have this patient, can you can you see them? And you know, occasionally as an exception, okay, maybe, but typically that's not mm -hmm. what happens. You know, it becomes once mm -hmm. that boundary is breached, if you like, around protecting what mm -hmm. is sensible and sustainable, um, there isn't any mm -hmm. sort of line there and, and um, and then it just becomes this kind of habit you know, as much as anything else that, and a, a mindset that um, is constantly um, overbooked and, and feeling that, you know, things are their responsibility when they're not just, you know, like sessions going over time, you know, and that mm. very often happens because uh, someone, you know, uh, may have a particularly oh. complex issue or they feel like I can't yeah. cut it off, you know, because the person's mm. upset, you know, at the, the, the time. Um, and if I end the mm. session, then it's going to be, you know, um, but in reality, and we know mm. the research around it actually says that being firm around boundaries mm. with session ends actually sends a message to the client that we do have confidence. So this is in the psychology context, of course, but you know that they um, that we're confident in their ability to manage themselves. That we think they do have self, you know, management capacity. That we do have faith in their ability. Whereas often the message that is sent, if we mindlessly kind of go over because we're helping the client, you know, is not the one mm -hmm. that we think we're sending. It's like, uh, you know, you're so incapable of you know coping that i feel i can't mm. leave i'm going to put my whole day you know back um mm. so you know that's that's something that um really you know we, we can't um you know we, we can get into automatically and and um mm. uh and not think about so being kind of very clear about those things um you know with you set up the expectation <laughs> you, you set up yeah. that expectation don't you it's like I know, you know, and on, as psychologists, I hear this so, so often, you know, when, when they're talking about some of their clients, there, there's this element of, you know, they wait until minute, you know, there's 10 minutes left in the session before they tell me, you know, like yeah. the, the most important thing that they should have started with, you know? And it's like, well, yeah. it took them 50 minutes to get comfortable with you in that moment. And, and they've been mulling it over and, and thinking about, do I have these conversations? So if you know this consistently happens, I hear this all the time, psychologists, you're all nodding your head, yes, I know. I mean, like, um, if you yeah. hear this all of the time, look at the, the data in that, right? How yeah. do we stop that then? Or yeah. how do you invite the client to have those conversations earlier, right? I yeah. mean, like, th there's things that if you had the time and the moment, you could actually look at some of the consistencies and some of the patterns about what's causing you to go over time in your sessions and pull yeah. it back and say, hold on, actually, maybe I need some supervision or maybe I need some training around this, or maybe, maybe I'm feeling like I'm having imposter syndrome. You know, that's something it's a yeah. female dominated field over here in Australia. You know, something that a lot of women struggle with is imposter syndrome. Yeah. And so, you know, if, if we're looking at the situation and saying, okay, how do I address this? And I can actually see that not being able to manage my time in sessions is really imposter syndrome. And I can go and seek some assistance with that, or I can go and work with work on that for myself. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's just, it's just a can of worms that we could kind of talk all night about, but I know we're <laughs> we could. Exactly, <laughs> we, we are. But and I think that the take home here though is all these things are natural, understandable mm -hmm. things that I think often say good things about you know, um, health practitioners. And it can be just as equally, like you say, be the physio or the chiropractor or that, you know, um, it's the same sort of things that happen for them about, oh, well, I'm here, I've also got this that's been bugging me. Yes. And then they'll, you know, <laughs> they'll then go into that, you know, um, or mm. look, something else, uh, you know. And, and so, you know, they say good things. So, but, you know, if we rather look at it as inevitability or of something that we mm. actually say, where does this happen? How does it 
kind of what are the mm -hmm. habits that I'm in and the work practices that result in something that really isn't um, good long term. And then that way you can you know at least identify it, and then you've got a good chance of being able to deal with it rather than it just sort mm -hmm. of being an accepted you know part That's of really uh, part of things. Exactly. Yeah. Really okay. Yeah. On to systems and structures here. Um, so a, a, this is something that I think um, <laughs> we both, okay, naturally, all right. So uh, Power Diary, it's a system, right? It is a, the whole idea of Power Diary is, you know, to have this centralized, secure, stable piece of software that manages mm. your practice. It's like the hub. That's what we're all about, right? Is to provide the, um, all the kind of services, all the automations, all the things we can do um to implement and and have the system take away a lot of this work so clearly okay i'm going to be like a, a huge um, fan of systems and processes but i know you are too because with you you're huge on reports and data and metrics right this is yeah, yeah. um My baby. So what, <laughs> it's your baby I, i've talked to you we've talked yeah. over years actually about this it's, it's yeah. awesome. so what's so important about it why should people care you know mm. because outside of just the you know accounting and element of things why should people care about their mm. metrics and what does it have to do with preventing burnout mm. or managing stress I I'm gonna I'm gonna jump down to um, the second point in here because mm -hmm. it brings us back to the first one but um, for example if you understand I mean look once you're introduced to a, to a client you have or a patient you do have a clinical responsibility with them right mm -hmm. you've seen them the first yeah. time you do have a clinical responsibility for them so when yeah. your caseload is overflowing and you've got too many clients on your caseload you actually can't provide good clinical care right you don't have the yeah. space there's yeah. no room for you to like run 10 minutes late or to have you know um you know um a client not attend their appointment there's just no room for any movement in that so if yeah. you can manage and understand the number of clients on your caseload, which by the way, if you're using your practice management system properly, Power Diary allows you to change an appointment or a client from active to inactive to a beautiful one, follow up, right? Um, yeah. You've got those settings already in there. And so if you're using that system to understand how many active clients that you have, also BTW or report that you've got in there. Um, I know yeah. we've gone over reports and systems, but you can actually see all of your active clients with no future appointments with a little bit of a toggle button <laughs> that you've got in there. Like exactly. yeah. feature. <laughs> anyway, so if you understand the number of active clients that you have on your caseload and you book them in consistently based on clinical care and the treatment that they need, lots of things happen with that. But you start to set up your schedule in a way you know, that you know every fortnight you've got the same people. You've mm -hmm. got the same, you know, presenting issues. You can then spread out those presenting issues so you can manage um, your diary from a presenting issue um, standpoint or the, the difficult clients or the easy clients. You know, I love my Tuesdays. I've got all my favorite clients and on a Tuesday, you know, like it, it's how mm -hmm. I can see, you know, like what that looks like in, in my diary. And so if you're booking future appointments based on clinical need and not what the present, not what the funding source pays, it's a little bit easier yeah. in the US to do that. Um, then you're starting to get that consistency in your diary. And so using your practice management um, reports and analytics allows you to then take control of over this. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the burnout kind of comes from, you know, frantically having to prepare for the day, not really remembering who the clients are, realizing, you know, the worst thing, you have three, excuse me, three back-to-back -back clients booked, you know, that are new. <laughs> you know, yeah. new clients are draining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. It takes more break like, You gotta be on for that. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. You can't just kind of relax into session, right? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. If, if you can manage that by understanding who, you know, appointment is, is, is where it allows you also to have boundaries around session fee policies, right? The cancellation policy then turns into a session fee policy so that you can collect payments at the time of the booking. And it makes it a lot easier for you to write your system notes. And it makes it a lot easier to have your rosters and, and set up those times because you know that the clients are respecting that therapeutic alliance with you, um, yeah. that they, they're not going to ask for times outside of their usual and customary session time and things like that. So it starts with knowing the information that you need and making sure that you're honoring that using your reports. Um, yeah. I, I'm just, I love 
love, love, love the Power Diary reports. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it might have been one of the first, um, uh, just, you know, uh, webinars we did a long time ago. Obviously, I think on on this very topic because it, you know, it, like, it, yeah. and it's exactly the reason that we have these reports in there. You know, it's it's not mm -hmm. just um, data for you know because you know it's fun to look at it. Um, I mean, it is, but besides that, um, the the. The, you know, it allows you to get into a rhythm and when you kind of you know, know the data, I think it, it allows you to be more confident in setting boundaries even with um, admin staff and so forth who yeah. might be, you know, they're often on the phone and, and receiving the kind of pressure mm -hmm. and then that kind of comes through to the practitioner. And if there's not numbers to kind of ground the thinking, then it's very easy to just, oh, okay, just book them in. But if you know, hey, look, the optimal for me is this many clients to, and right. they're booked in in a regular sort of basis, then if you're approaching that limit, then you know very clearly, you know, it, it makes it a lot easier to say, actually, no. Or you may have one awkward time slot, you know, that is there at a, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, a one o'clock or a one thirty on a Wednesday yeah. or something that yeah. is, you know, people don't perhaps want as much. And so if there is a kind of pressure from a, a, a client or we're feeling that way, it's easier to be able to say, mm -hmm. well, okay, I have a one, you know, a one or one thirty, whatever mm -hmm. awkward time slot, have the person commit to that time slot if they really, you know, um, want that regular, you know, want to become a, a patient and become a regular then that way it, it at least it balances right. your needs as, as a human <laughs> um, with right. the needs that um, are being you know often experienced um, as, a, as a professional so um, yeah absolutely and I think things like you know session notes um, you know using the templates like you know we've got those built in so that you can you know you can copy the previous um session note to do your current one i know there's mixed views out there about whether you should do that but mm -hmm. it's it's available um and then automating mm -hmm. things like you know recalls and um sms reminders letter templates yeah. you can press the button and <laughs> uh That's you know right. collect information using forms you know all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. it just means less admin less paperwork it's sort of organized and you know automated mm -hmm. so um you know, I think one of the you know take homes is maximize the use of you know whatever systems you're using, or, um, mm. and hopefully using Power Day. But even if you've got another system, you know, mm. just maximize the use um, of what you're doing to, like you say, get it into a regular kind of mm. you know rhythm <laughs> and know the numbers. Yeah. I think yeah. I think it also goes further than that. It allows you to provide good clinical care. You know, it allows you to get your client outcome measures and your client outcomes. You know, you know that people are being discharged because you, the clinician, and me, the client, have decided I'm actually done with my therapeutic journey or, you know, the, the, the service that is being delivered. You know, and I, you yeah. don't, as a clinician, you don't have to think about all of these other factors and, and filtered things in there because you're seeing your ideal audience. You've got the right number of clients on your caseload and your schedule is being managed. So you're honoring yourself and providing yeah. better clinical care, all just by using your practice management system. It's yeah. just, you yeah. corrected me once. I remember when we first met, I was like, oh, and our diary management system? And you were like, Tash, <laughs> Tash, no. It's way bigger than a diary management system. And I'm like, you were absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, time's just one element, right? Of, of running it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and, and I think too, with with reports and, and utilizing these things, um, you know, the the supervision of other clinicians and the management of other clinicians, I think, becomes so much easier too because you're removing this sort of dynamic of well, we're both professionals and both good at what we do. Um, but maybe, you know, you've got different points of view about elements of how um, someone might be practicing and um, when it's driven, when it's based on, on data, um, then it's a lot easier to have that conversation, you know, because it's like, hey, we're, no, you know, we're noticing the average number of sessions is, you know, for you is different, you know, um, and it's maybe not either here nor there, but let's have a talk about why that is. Or maybe if someone's having a difficulty engaging um, patients and there's a lot of single sessions, no further bookings, then it's a flag without making assumptions. It can be, hey, we're noticing this let's have a discussion about it because it may be an engagement problem or it might be just a work habit problem 
of not rebooking. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But it's 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 also too understanding. Like, yeah, you're right. Like, if act if if you're not doing active client follow up and clients coming in for their appointments, and you might have a low client attendance, I always look at client attendance in conjunction with retention. Um, you know, you yeah. the clinician, me the client. I say I should be in therapy. You say I should be in therapy. So the question is, yeah. am I in therapy? Right. And so the yeah. data shows you, and you've got a great little thing that shows you how many clients, um, how like the sessions booked and attended or, or something like that in the practice right. yeah. um, profile, the demographics. Right. And so if, if I'm, if I've booked 15 sessions and I've attended two, am I actually in therapy? You know? Yeah. And so like, it really gives you an opportunity to say, actually practice, you're giving yeah. me children and I don't work with children. You know, yeah, like actually right. I don't have the right clientele in my caseload. I'm not comfortable seeing this type of presenting issue. And so it yeah. goes back to reflecting and understanding. And maybe there's nothing that you need to change. Maybe it's just being able to have an active conversation with your principal psych your principal psychologist or clinician full stop, you know, and yeah. saying to them, so I'm not comfortable with the presenting issues that you're giving me. You know, I don't I don't work in this area a lot. I don't I don't feel as upskilled in this or I've just taken the training yesterday. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. You know, and being yeah. able to honor that. So yeah. yeah. And be able to see, you know, we when we um you know working with like a, a physio or someone, they, they might uh be looking at oh, well, you know, a client is reporting, you know, lack of progress or something, and then they pull up the mm -hmm. attendance history. You know, this is more one more thing. And hang on, the, the problem is nothing with the provision of care. It's that, well, it's nothing to do with the content. It's to do with, mm -hmm. uh, like you say, are they actually in treatment? Uh, yeah, you just, yeah. Uh, Big. Okay, now yeah. on to. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I think we lost you there for a second. I think uh, it froze, but um, uh, let's worry. We will uh, jump onto uh, number five. So delegating and outsourcing. Um, and so this year we're talking about really sort of leveraging um, through either delegating, you know, within the team mm -hmm. and having other people mm -hmm. do things <laughs> instead mm -hmm. of you having to do them. And yeah. this is often hard, right, for people yeah. to yeah. let go of that kind of control mm -hmm. or that feeling of mm -hmm. if someone else does it, maybe they're not going to do it as well as i will yeah um yeah. i would like it done but um yeah. really without this i mean you just can't do it all yourself right <laughs> you, you, well you can but i mean i guess you you need to just find that yourself right like you yeah. can do it all yourself and you are probably doing it all yourself but is it that actually making you happy is that what you yeah. want to be doing are you sacrificing time elsewhere because you're doing it all yourself um, and so that's the question, you know, like you don't have to delegate, you don't have to outsource anything, but are you happy not doing it? You know, like mm -hmm. is, is does the stress and anxiety of handing something over to someone else to do outweigh the ability to be going to the gym or spending time with your family or whatever it is you want, or that idea that you've been sitting on, you know, a lot of clinicians right now, they're talking about building passive income, building, you know, a way of building up an income without having to see um, face to face one to one sessions. Can you do that if you are doing everything, you mm -hmm. know, um, and that's the thing, you know, there's somebody that's going to be able to do things a lot better than you. And there's things that people are, you're only going to be able to do well yourself. Um, yeah. And so you have to really decide what does that look like for you as an individual? Yeah, I think that's right. And that, that idea of, um, you know, really, you know, I, I often to look at that pretty much anything um, that can be done by someone else, um, you know, essentially should be, right? Um, okay. Because yeah. there's usually always things, particularly if you're, you know, a practice owner, a business leader, a ma practice manager, a clinician who wants to do other things in their life, you know, there's usually, you know, really um, things that, you know, you can spend that time doing the other, like new things you can do that are going to add impact, have an effect. Um, that impact might be on your personal life, may not, it doesn't have to be a work thing, but just add quality, enjoyment, fulfillment and so forth um, that you can do that someone else can't do, right? You can't, it's hard to delegate, you know, not, you can't delegate time with your family, right? That sort of stuff, yeah, you really want to do that, right? And enjoy yeah, and go to the concerts and do, sit there and do the you know, homework with your kids and whatever it might be. Um, yeah. And 
uh, mm -hmm. delegate out stuff that might be, you know, things like it could be admin, it could be whatever it might be. And like at our, at our practice, one of the things we did um, early and, you know, these things you often do them when you think you can't afford it. That's the rub often, right? Because it feels mm -hmm. like, uh, well, we're growing. I don't really have the budget. I'll do that later. You yeah. know, no, you actually got to do it the opposite way. And it's sort of weird how it works mm -hmm. out. But mm -hmm. if you offload and outsource all these things, you sort of, yeah, it might cost a little bit. But because what you then mm -hmm. do with that time is more productive, mm -hmm. um, either personally or, or can be financially, mm -hmm. Um, you know, then actually it becomes a really positive cycle because you start to realize, you know, mm -hmm. so, you know, for example, at our clinic and, you know, the goal was to be able to not need to be in there, right, you know, all, all the time and not mm -hmm. need to manage. So everything we could possibly think of, you know, so, um, you know, there's uh, people who would deliver flowers every <laughs> week and it would go yes. into the front, right? I mean, they don't go and pick them up anyway. Yeah. There's a contract in place of the flowers yeah. and they deliver the flowers. Mm -hmm. They bring the bars, mm -hmm. they remove the bars, they replace mm -hmm. them, right? Um, the gardening, mm -hmm. the cleaning, the anything you can sort of think of, um, touch up paint, whatever it might be, if furniture delivered, we'll mm -hmm. want them to deliver it to exactly the room, right? As many things that we can mm -hmm. possibly do um, because, you know, then it creates space, you know, um, and mm. then you do things that are more fun or more profitable or enjoyable. Or, mm. um, yeah. But it's a mindset. I, thing, just you know? take, that a, take, take that a step further. Outsource your cleaning, outsource your gardening, you know, go yeah. ahead and order oh, yeah. boxes of food that are delivered, like those ready-made meals. Like I, you know, I'm like, just, just, I'm just yeah. unashamedly. Yeah you know, do think like outsource that stuff to other people so that you can have more free time. You want to, you want to work more, you want to do everything yourself at work, fine, you know, yeah. but when you come home, what can you outsource to other people? Yeah. Get a cleaner, Absolutely. get that gardener, get someone, get a chef, actually, just don't even bother getting a <laughs> box to get a chef. <laughs> right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Like if it doesn't, you know, um, you know, if it's not adding value, not adding quality, not adding any of those things, then get rid of it if you can. <laughs> That's the, 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 yeah, the take yeah. home here. And just try it. If you're not used to doing it, if you find that it's a bit of a struggle, mm -hmm. just try it. Pick something that you don't feel, mm -hmm. you know, you feel okay about and just do it. Even if you don't think you can afford it because, you know, you, yeah. something's got to give. And I guarantee mm -hmm. when you're doing that, you'll, you'll free up more time and more even creative resources to do something that takes you more forward rather than gets you stuck. Um, where you were. Okay, just my full time. Oh, I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I just, I want to say something else because actually a lot of times in my coaching, I hear a lot of people saying, or even with the admin, you know, stuff, like people saying, I like doing this. I don't want to hand this over to other people. Um, and I'm like, okay, fine. You, you want to be creating your own social media graphics, even though it takes you three hours. Cool. What are the other, what are, where else can you give away three hours to someone else to delegate? So, yeah. Don't feel like you should give away the things that you that people say you should be giving away. Like that's yeah. that's not the point. It's your life. We get one life. You have yeah. to live it how you want. Like your rules, yeah. your your design. So absolutely. Yeah. No, I, no, I agree with that. I think these are, and I guess everything we're talking about are examples of things. So hey, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Make it fit for you, but the, just take away the concept, right, of this. Um, yeah. Okay. Being intentional. So um, I, I might let you walk us through this one a little bit because I know this is a, a, a pet thing that you really do well with, with people. So um, <laughs> we're talking about intentionality. What are we talking about here and how does, mm. want to walk us through it uh, for, for everyone before yeah, we finish up today. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess in that, you, you know, it's, we, this is all, I think I said this on the Instagram story, like, there's a lot of books that you can read, you know, there's a lot of advice that our friends and our family give us, you know, about a work life balance, or you should relax more, you work too hard, you know, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And I always say to people in my own personal life, I'm like, I will always work, put work before my personal life. I love the work that I do. Um, you know, I just, I love it. I absolutely love it. So it's really about understanding what works for you. How do you get what you need? Um, in there. And um, this this suggestion here about building out your ideal week, um, people are kind of like, yeah, look, I, I it doesn't really make sense to me. I don't, you know, don't know what that means, or I've got it on paper, but what does that mean? If you've got this out and you build it out, you know, like you're saying, okay, I have to go to the gym 
you know, or I have to be with my family, right? Every night of the week, because that's what I'm choosing to do. But I'm okay with doing some of my admin on the weekends. So that means, you know, I'm going to only see, as you can see in here on a Wednesday, you've got a shorter amount of time, but you need to maybe do some, some admin. Um, but you're also, filled, you know, putting in, you know, some planning time. You, you can actually think and, and allow yourself to do what you need to do. But when you're actually building out your ideal week, what I really like to be able to, you know, I say to my clients, I'm like, okay, this is what you want to be doing ideally. What's stopping you? You know, and 90% yeah. of the time they say they, they are, they stop themselves. You know, it's me that's yeah. stopping this. I feel guilty. I feel like, you know, like sometimes my family night is running into my clients, right? You see on Thursday, you've got family that very easily bumps into client time. Right. And so there's this layer and level of guilt that we have yeah. as human beings in, in that glorification of busy that um, we have to be everything to everyone. And yeah. so when we acknowledge that, when we put up, and I, I'm not a very big inspirational kind of person, but you know, I'm like, if you want that inspiration, go see a different business coach. Less. I'm like, I'm very practical. <laughs> like, that's the thing. <laughs> practicalities, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's like, what's stopping you? You know, and, and people will say, oftentimes myself. And so I'm like, okay, well, then what are you going to do about it? You know, are you going to keep yeah. having your clients take over that time? Are you going to, or, Let's use that planning time. Let's use that admin time to actually look at the numbers. Let's look at your analytics. Let's look at the goalposts that you want. And then every time you're not achieving that, just know that, 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 that you've chosen to do that. I've chosen yeah. to work more with clients and book, you know, outside of my client time rather than going to yoga. I've chosen yeah. to do this. And yeah. when you have more control about that, you start to feel like, I always say too, um, don't say, don't say, oh, sorry, I've gotten behind on this or, you know, I haven't gotten to my emails or whatever. This, I always kind of just say to people, and I didn't make this up, obviously, but it's like, I've chosen not to prioritize that or I haven't prioritized that. <laughs> yeah, and people yeah, it's good. Where is it? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't prioritized it. I don't yeah. know. It's still in my inbox because yeah. I don't like writing, yeah, reading yeah. my emails, right? I haven't prioritized it, yeah. you know, and communicating yeah. that with people, setting those boundaries, my away message you know, states basically that I'm not going to respond to your email until I'm ready to do it. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. and I'm not, it's, it's just because I don't want to spend hours and days in emails. It's so archaic, you know? Yeah. And so I have in my diary, I have times, specific times that I sit down and I respond to emails. Um, yeah. And if I get too many emails about a specific thing, I'll say, look, can we communicate this in a different way? You yeah. know, like, yeah. let's, let's filter this in. Let's integrate this into the systems that we already have in place so that I'm not having to make additional time for it mm -hmm. so that I can actually give you quality time when I'm talking to you. And I'm not just shooting off a quick email just to be able to satisfy your need for me to respond right away. You know, yeah. like it's this whole thing that if we can have communication and boundaries, we're happy, we're all happier because yeah. you know what to expect from me, right? You don't send me emails, right? Like you, you know what to expect yeah. from me. Yeah. And so yeah. like we've got a, 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 an easy way to communicate. Now we're both happy. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yes. And, and I think too, the, the other thing I really love about, you know, this, this from an intentionality point of view is that, um, you know, it, it, it moves away. You're intentionally, like to say, um, uh, controlling the ratio of what you're doing. Because I think, you mm -hmm. know, typically what happens without this intention um, is that work takes up, an undefined amount of time, you know, like there's those, you know, expands and creeps into everything. And if there aren't any mm -hmm. sort of, um, there's no sort of intention there to say, I'm going to spend mm -hmm. this, these other things are important in my life too. I'm going to put them in first, right? And then work is going mm -hmm. to fit in around that. Um, you know, if we don't do that, we just sleepwalk our way into it, right? If we don't have that family mm -hmm. time, those things, you know, clearly blocked out and, and protected. We'll just mm -hmm. roll over it. We'll just, we'll eat because mm -hmm. it's just sort of like, oh, well, I don't really have anything I have to go to thinking it's not mm -hmm. a, you know, a school meeting or a whatever, like okay. it feel, everything feels mm -hmm. into um, expendable. So by doing it and saying, mm -hmm. what is the, what do I want? And let's clearly make that intention evident. Mm -hmm. Then, okay, if mm -hmm. you're going to break it, go over it, you, you, you were doing it, like you said, consciously and you mm -hmm. know, okay, I'm making mm -hmm. on this one. But if you're doing that every, every day it's you're going to pick it up you know you're going to see every time That's i'm right. having to you know mm. yeah, change this um and the other thing just on this uh calendar here because we you also have this other um 
uh, here. Yeah. <laughs> this slide here yeah. on the, yeah. So here yeah. you do something a little bit different here, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So what, what, what do you do when you're looking at a year view like this? <laughs> I actually just encourage people at the beginning of the year or at the beginning of the financial year to take that intentionality a bit further. And I want you to block out specific times that yeah. you're, you know, doing planning days or take, you know, long weekends or to block out holidays. Now you don't have to have any idea where you're going. You don't have to know what you're going to be doing. I actually say to pop in one day every once in a while when you're supposed to be seeing clients, or you're supposed to be working to give yourself a mental health day, you know, yeah. like you take that even further. And this actually had a conversation with a client of mine just last week or the week before. And he was saying it revolutionized. He always thought he had to give to the demands of how clients wanted or what clients needed. And he would work his personal life around, you know, the way that the clients wanted him to be. And he's like, I'm an entrepreneur. I've got employees and contractors and, you know, why, why, why am I not taking more control of this? And so he's designed his entire calendar and now he's asking people his work people, you know, clients to kind of fit into that. And yeah. then you can decide as you kind of get up to the date, maybe you don't want to take that long weekend. Maybe you would rather, you know, you know, do something different with that. You want to come into work or whatever that looks like, but you have the option, but your diaries do fill up fast. We're so in the ingrained, you know, day-to-day -day stuff that if you don't plan ahead and this takes five seconds, this, this, this yeah. doesn't take yeah. long at all. Just right now, stop going ahead, you know, in over the next 12 months and just block out random holidays and days. Um, they don't have yep. to make sense right now, but you'll start seeing a relief when you get to that. You're like, okay, I've got yeah. a break coming up. You know, yeah. it's just, it revolutionizes Absolutely. what you do. I agree. And I think also from a practical point of view too, you know, it means you don't end up um, in a situation where everyone else in the practice or in your business has booked their holidays, mm -hmm. you know, and then because you haven't done it, you, when you go to think, oh, I want to take a holiday soon, mm -hmm. and you look and like there's not a good time because everyone's already got, you know, stuff booked. You're like, I can't be away at the same mm -hmm. time as that person. And, you know, and then ending up becoming the sort of, um, you know, the uh, not getting it in, you're not prioritizing yourself. So getting it in and locking it in, um, it, it is magic. And I've, I've actually said, I never used to do this. So I have to confess, right? Mm -hmm. um, I used to be like, oh, yeah, I don't really want a holiday. I'm, you know, I'm fine. But yeah. then it would just roll on. And now I'm much better at going, you know mm -hmm. what, let's block that out, block that out. And uh, it's been a game changer um, for me as, okay. as well. And I've got to say, yeah. I'm very late to this particular party. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> so, we've got to fess up, right? Um, okay. So, uh, <laughs> Finally here, um, so protecting this intention here uh, and protecting mm -hmm. your intention. So putting those structures mm -hmm. in place, keeping it blocked, mm -hmm. training others <laughs> um, mm -hmm. to, to make sure mm -hmm. they, and this is the people, if you've got other people assisting you with booking appointments, you know, then mm -hmm. we've got to make sure that, that you know, um, that they understand that time is blocked. You know, it, it's, it's not flexi time. It's not. Oh, well, That's if right. someone really wants an appointment. It's just you know, admin really, time. <laughs> just admin is just, you know, um, just my life, you know, my, my dreams and my goals. Just time. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. 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 just my mental right. health, you know, let's just ditch that. Don't worry about that. Sure. If I That's wants right. to come. Uh... Actually, I want you to say that. It's just my mental health. Let's, let's <laughs> Exactly. Doesn't matter. No, no. The client needs to work today when we're supposed to have the appointment, but wants to come tomorrow. My family time. Yeah, yeah. That's right. We don't want to send that message, right? So we've got to, you know, be consistent. You know, that I like that saying that we teach other people how to treat us. You know, um, and I think that really holds in this sort of scenario. So you know, by treating it seriously and saying, hey, no, that is that time. You know, I'm not. We're not touching that. Pretty soon, um, that becomes something that. Everyone understands and, and um, you know, the pressure goes away um, to, to constantly fill it. Okay, implement one new template process or outsource, delegate one new thing a week, right? So this is about just, you know, take it easy, right? You don't have to change if you're hopefully picked up a few things or at least sparked something yeah. in our discussions today. Um, yeah. You don't need to change everything at once, right? No one can do that. So, or, you know, no one, so. <laughs> Right, do it, take it easy. <laughs> exactly. Pick pick one thing you can delegate, you know, yeah. implement one new template or one thing you can automate or to simplify or or whatever it might be. Yeah. And um 
you know, just do it bit by bit. It doesn't need to be a dramatic kind of change, um, but just mm -hmm. start out. Keep working on that mindset. Um, so mm -hmm. that goal, front of mind, so we know mm -hmm. which way we're headed. <laughs> Um, right. you know, so that's always, you know, um, to keep us kind of focused. And then if there are specific blockers and things that you find, then, you know, you can identify them more easily, you can narrow down and you can, you can work on those. Um, and just, I guess, you mm -hmm. know, understand that, that, you know, these things are often the things that get in the way, they're usually because, mm -hmm. um, you know, clinicians want to help, you know, the people in the health space that mm -hmm. want to help and they're giving by nature and, but, you know, so making a change, it can be hard because it can feel like, you know, I'm sure mm -hmm. some people might have thought some of the things we've talked about today would have gone, oh, that's harsh, you know, mm -hmm. that's really, oh, I couldn't mm -hmm. do that. But actually, you know, what we're talking about is prioritizing, you know, making sure that you're working in a way that's sustainable, that maximizes the impact and, and it means that you're, you know, able to continue to do, you know, what, what you love. So, but it can be hard. That's okay. Just take it bit by bit. Mm -hmm. Seek help. You know, if you're struggling mm -hmm. with something in the supervision with mm -hmm. a, uh, a a coach, mm -hmm. um, we certainly had a coach when we started mm -hmm. our practice. Um, you, know, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, I think our coach costs us in the first probably 30% of our entire profit in the first year. Right? I mean, it sounds crazy, but we wanted, we, like we were spending a fortune, but we wanted to get things yeah. right from the start. You know, we're like, okay, this is where we go. Mm -hmm. So get some help if it's not, you know, um, well, mm -hmm. I mean, everyone can do with a, a coach and support, but you know, if we get stuck on something, you know, um, you know, get some help in there and, um, mm -hmm. you know, get some other ideas and uh, just give it a go. Mm -hmm. I think too, just embracing our neurodivergent brains, like the, the, there's that aspect of, there's no shame in being a bit disorganized and being a bit scattered and, you know, really just embrace it right and and look at yeah. that you know as just kind of say okay i i do this i hire people because of my weaknesses and i would see them as weaknesses i'm like i am not interested in doing that you do that for me so you yeah. know just there's that that element of just yeah. being who you are and being unapologetic and so if you think i don't deserve rest i want you to understand why why don't you deserve rest you know yeah. like it's just that you wouldn't say that to a client so don't say no. it to yourself yeah no i i agree 100 percent. okay we are uh slightly over time so apologies uh but uh everyone but but uh hopefully uh you know you you, you know we're able to to take something you know um away from this and at least spark you know the mm -hmm. idea of prioritizing yourself and seeing yourself as, as mm -hmm. you know um worthy of uh you know mm -hmm. really um, looking after and, and making sure that you continue mm -hmm. to do what you love in a way that's kind of, that's healthy mm -hmm. um and uh natasha if people want to uh follow up any questions mm -hmm. uh, with you or um they want mm -hmm. to get in contact what's the best way uh to to reach you um you can find us on our socials at private practice alliance um or um check out our admin team at www.aceprivatepractice.com so any of those ways we'll, you'll be able to reach us thank wonderful. you wonderful thank you thank you and if anyone uh, would like to reach us at powder of course you can reach our team at support at powdery.com uh, or jump on a, a live chat on our um, website you can also book if you're wanting to get more out of your your system and you think there might be some things that uh, we can help you mm -hmm. set up you know something automatic get your templates working a different way or you just want someone to have a look over your account with you um, just let mm -hmm. us know we can um, you can book in a, a time of one of our team of course completely um, you know free of charge we just want to uh, make sure everyone gets the most out of it and if we can help hey let us know our team uh, love love the work that we do so um, thank you very much mm -hmm. for attending and um, do let us mm -hmm. know if we can help and good night bye everyone <laughs>